Oh, hi there. Uh, wanted to make a movie about uh, defending religion. Uh, I guess Christianity or Catholicism. To be honest, I don't really know the difference. Uh, that's not exactly the point I wanted to make. Uh, what I'm going to say is it has been a good thing uh, in a certain sense. Uh, a lot of bad things have happened because of religion. Uh, a lot of people fought a lot of wars and killed each other over that sort of stuff. Uh, explosive arguments have happened. Uh, probably didn't do Rome any good when uh, Christianity was introduced to them. Uh, it was a bad thing between the Irish and the English. Uh, one being Catholic and one being Protestant and all that sort of stuff. But, in spite of all that stuff, um, religion has been good in the sense that at least some modicum of a history book was written. Although a lot of the more famous stories are incredibly vague and, you know, really watered down at this point. I mean, to begin with, they weren't even written in English. Uh, that's to be taken into consideration. But one of the advantages of religion was unit cohesion. Uh, basically, the wars that happened that are blamed on religion were going to happen anyway. Uh, let's face it, uh, you know, even today, many people are still savages. And, uh, you know, you being religious doesn't exempt you from that if you obviously conduct in savage behavior like they do in Africa. There's a lot of places in Africa where they, they believe in God and they pray to him. And also in India, uh, a lot of people believe that sort of stuff. Um, but uh, those are pretty savage places, actually. That's the truth. Uh, but what about the unit cohesion was religion, you know, it was the shepherd and the herd. Uh, basically, the shepherd led the herd around, and when they needed a fight, he was able to rally him up because he knew what to say. Predominantly, it was a male when it comes to religion, but, I mean, there was Boudicca. Uh, won't say she was exactly religious or anything, but uh, they had their beliefs, and she was a warrior woman uh, from back in the day that, uh, you know, was a significant problem for the Roman Empire. Didn't end up winning in the end. She had a she had a bad battle at the end, but and she probably wasn't all that nice, but nobody really was in history. So anyway, yeah, getting back to unit cohesion, it is way easier to say introduce religion. Um, in the appropriate settings and then you know tell 10 guys I want you on the side of that cliff you go up there and you do it now and they go and do it whereas you know if everyone's got their own individual kind of I'm not doing this I'm not going up there if there's not a sandwich I had three beers I'm not going up there that kind of stuff uh, things don't get done uh, big giant uh, buildings and advancement of technology doesn't get done. I know Christianity has been blamed for uh, the suppression of technology. Um, that's a yes and a no. Um, there have been some instances where, in particular, uh, medicinal uh, advancements were shunned upon and you were openly persecuted for doing that. Um, Although it was done in the name of religion at the time, you know, it really depends on when and where it was and what time in history it was. Uh, so, I mean, it, religion can sometimes just be an excuse for, you know, seeing something that you don't like and then, you know, rallying up people to do something about it. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, basic medicines we could have discovered much sooner had it not been for people suppressing uh, that kind of research for so long. And they did it under the guise of religion and how it was blasphemy and against God and all that sort of stuff. Uh, which, you know, it's a bullshit reason, but if you didn't have that reason, you'd have another reason. Uh, that's how it was. And when I say that, you know, those wars would have happened anyway, it was the language that was used was religion. 
and unfortunate is to say, uh, religion had uh, very, very um, simple roots. Uh, I mean, I, my theory is you can't really read up on this. I ain't gonna waste no time looking up in the Bible. I actually got you know a really old Bible that belonged to my native Indian grandfather, uh, which would probably be an interesting read, but you know I, I can't be bothered. Uh, but I have my suspicions that uh, uh, religion in the beginning was chicken scratch on uh, cave walls, really, and then probably you know it got upgraded over time. And you know, and and like, particularly in the Middle East and uh, you know parts of India and things like that, where they pray numerous times a day. Um, really, what that is is people sort of getting into a trance where they're not really thinking, they're not really doing, they're just they have this one vague thought of things getting better or whatever problem they have in their life being resolved um, usually anyway I mean I guess some of the smarter um, people of religious faith will start asking uh, fundamental questions about uh, God and religion uh, I mean I prayed a few times I went to church a couple of times um, I perceive that as being very different from other people like uh, my dad for example cannot stand church because church was very different for him when he was growing up and you know it's a very good thing that it's not the same as it was back then because it was kind of fucked up back then I mean I've heard of the evangelicals I watched a documentary on that and you know the south of the states and how weird they are uh, but you know, you go to most churches around here in the Western world, and uh, you know, they talk about nice things. Uh, if and when they talk about historical things, they you know present it in a more reasonable manner. And I ain't got no problem with that. I mean, if you're saying nice things, it's a group setting. Uh, maybe you got a band. Uh, a very great motivational speaker. It's a place for people to go where they don't have to really pay any money if they don't have any. Uh, it gives them something to do. And, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing. Uh, of course, yeah, many people throughout history, um, you know, did not have a good time with uh, religion or growing a church because, you know, it was just a totally different setting and it was ran by different sorts of people. And, uh, you know, looking back, obviously that's a bit more nutty of a time than. Uh, the officials uh, would uh, like to admit, but uh, for the most part, I think the Western world is cleaning up their act, and I'm having trouble believing that you know radical extremists are being trained uh, for terrorist activity in the Western world. I think predominantly most of that occurs in the Middle East, where their leaders are backward, uh, they're angry, and very, very stupid, and their ability to control people is, is very primitive. Um, basically, it's, uh, you know, divert their attention from their regular problems and concentrate it on, well, it's primarily the Americans now, but I mean, they have every right to just hate the British just as much as the Americans. Um, then the French and all those other people as well. Um, but you know, in some places they actually still speak French uh, in Middle Eastern countries. Uh, I forget which ones. Um, so that's something. Uh, but yeah, getting back to it, just being the language that was used. If religion wasn't around, basically, it was the beginning stages of a central government. Um, you know, people would still be doing, going around doing bad things. They just wouldn't have, um, you know, organized armies to actually go about uh, doing whatever task or mission or campaign they had to do. And one way or another, uh, religion 
it comes in different forms. You can be an atheist, and that's a religion. And, um, I mean, if you really pay attention to um, certain individuals on what they have to say about uh, atheism, then, in a sense, they become your god. They are the person you look up to for answers, and they are the people that lead you. It's, it's basically a religion. It's a cult of personality. And that is the same thing with uh, religion to begin with. It's, it was a cult of personality. Uh, David, the giant slayer. Cult of personality. This is the guy who lived 116 years, or 120 or something like that. No, he didn't. He probably died when he was like 35 or 40. People didn't live that long back then. Assuming he didn't get killed by something. It just perpetuated the idea, you know, didn't make so many public appearances for a good 60 or 80 years. And, uh, you know, said he had godlike abilities and this, that, and the other. It's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is the thing about religion is, you know, a few people say something. And if the shepherd can say things, uh, you know, to them in a convincing manner, and they spread the message, and they spread it, and they spread it, and they spread it. Uh, it really doesn't matter if it's a straight up lie or not, or if it is the truth or it's distorted. And, you know, Purple Monkey Dishwasher, the, the story changes over time. And then, uh, as over time, um, you know, obviously there are revised versions. I mean, you go out and buy a Bible today, anywhere, or you go to a church and you get one. It will not sound a damn thing like any of the original ones. Probably even 50 years ago, they'll, they'll, they'll edit things out, take things out, reword things. And, you know, that's a good thing because uh, I, know I, I haven't read too many of the books, but I've had people try to explain to me how their interpretations sound like. And I go, you're wasting your damn time reading this thing, man. None of that makes any damn sense. <laughs> I mean... Uh, that's typically how I go about learning about books. Uh, it's not that I can't understand the words. It's just when I go to write something, it's coherent. It makes sense. I, I don't do run-on sentences. The grammar is more or less, you know, it's plausible. It may not always be correct, but it is, it's plausible. It's, it's, you know, like, it's not hard to write proper. And... I mean, I don't, I don't read so much books because I think I might have mentioned this in that Fire and Fury video, but anyway, uh, books have a tendency to give you the runaround. Um, they make you go through a lot of reading that, you know, accentuates a very small, insignificant thing. Like, you could probably read, you know, chapters uh, where they talk about what's happening in a garden, for example. Or, um, you know, I guess in the business climate or anything, climbing up the mountain, I don't know. And, you know, you could read like chapter after chapter of it, and it's just like, well, what did you say? That, couldn't you have said all that in a paragraph instead of long, spindly sentences that don't go anywhere? The Bible is filled with that. You know, long, drawn out stories that just don't make any sense. And you look at writing today of all kinds, like you go to Wikipedia, even for a simple topic such as uh, Chief Blackhawk, uh, the, um, the chief whose uh, facade was used as the emblem for the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, there's not a lot of writing there, so it's you know, not that hard to read. I read it. But, you know, the gist of the story of the guy is that he didn't like the Americans, and he sided with the British in a few battles, um, signed some treaties, did a little bit of trading, some scalping, um, he was, I think he was captured at some point, and then, um, you know, he was taken past uh, Detroit, and uh, they were heckling him, and, and then he died, I forgot how he died. And, you know, that's basically the gist of the story. And then, you know, when he died, they put his remains in a certain place. And then they wanted to put it in a museum. And some of them thought they were desecrating him, blah, 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 blah. And yet, that was, was just a story. And I just told it to you in, what, 20 seconds? But, uh, you know, you were reading that up on Wikipedia. It's worth doing. 
but essentially it says the same thing, but, you know, it takes you 20 minutes to read it. Well, I mean, not 20 minutes, but maybe like 10 minutes, but you, you see what I mean. 20 seconds to explain, 10 minutes to read it. And that's, that's the problem with reading books, and, and that's the problem with reading the Bible. Um, but, in his defense, um, it was the beginning stages of evolution, as far as being able to control the masses and, you know, essentially get them what to do. And my theory is there is such a thing as a god and goddesses. There's no reason they, they both exist. Uh, the, the Bible's backward version, how it's just a man who's God or an entity that resembles more of a man that's just a, that's a god, then I don't, that's not accurate at all. And you, you can't exist without women. And women can't exist without men. So there has to be a god and a goddess. Um, I mean, I like to poke fun. Uh, I I did always believe in uh, the goddess Kali, and uh, I was uh, actually hoping to get a movie where it was just, you know, it was a decent movie anyway. There was this guy who was always going, "Oh, Kali," and then, uh, of course, you know, uh, Thor Ragnarok came out, and Hela is essentially essentially sees Kali. Uh, you know, Western version of, of Cali, anyway. Um, so that aspect needs to be more introduced into the Bible. But you really still got nutters out there who will tweak at, uh, you know, changing information like that. Because uh, I forgot what movie it was. I think it might have been Dogma, where they were talking about the buddy Jesus and, you know, just revising religion. Because, you know, there's so many mysteries of the world and the universe that, uh, you know, we cannot explain. And do I believe there's a dude up in the sky who's sitting in the clouds doing nothing but watching us? Not really, but uh, I do believe there is such a place where nothing bad happens to you and it's all comfy and cushy. And I do believe there is a place where everything really really is terrible and you know you don't really need um, you know South Park devil uh, big giant red homosexual um, to um, be there to actually be in a place considered to be hell you could just be you know in a really lousy place uh, it doesn't have to be you know literally what the Bible says but I had heard in some part of the Bible anyway, that hell is actually not having a body, but just the ability to see what's going on. I don't understand how that could be hell. I mean, obviously it's not ideal, but uh, it doesn't have hell. Um, you know, being tortured or anything like that. But I mean, of course, there'd be bad things about that. You'd see things you don't like and you can't do anything about it. So that wouldn't be good, but it obviously wouldn't be the worst thing. So, and uh, don't agree with that. Uh, but, you know, uh, I think that, um, um, well, religion's based on good and evil and how they're both powers and how they both exist in the world, and that much is true. And, um, you know, I suspect in earlier decades, uh, a lot of religious ceremonies were less focused on God and uh, more of the devil, and um, rather than <laughs> encourage good behavior, it um, encouraged bad behavior, and um, you know, obviously that wouldn't be good uh, on any stretch of the imagination. Um, I don't know. People have different experiences. It's a different interpretation wherever you go. Uh, so long as there's some sort of, you know, balance, reasoning, uh, some medium, uh, uh, middle ground where, you know, it's taught appropriately. I mean, obviously, not a lot uh, a simple pastor in Canada can do about. I don't know, maybe one in Venezuela or Italy or whatever. There's not much they can do about it. I mean, this day and time where um, it's 
one entity that controls everything. It'll never be. Uh, that's why no president, no prime minister, no leader of any country will ever have the authority of the entire country. Uh, they may have the loudest voice, but uh, it'll never be just one person deciding everything. Too much information, too many things going around, too many people who don't like taking no for an answer. Uh, it's not like back in the day when, you know, people were dumb. <laughs> Everyone was dumb. Now, now we got a, a lot of chiefs and uh, they're trying to create more Indians in the sense that uh, they need more people to be told what to do as opposed to being the people who tell what people to do. And I mean, you climb up the authoritarian uh, ladder, and the more you hate being told what to do. You can exist in society and not be told what to do if you're smart about it. Um, of course, I mean, there are a lot of examples where you are told what to do. Uh, workplace, education system, laws of society, uh, you know, all, all of the essential things. But, I mean, you can limit those things and live a more quiet life. You know, you get a casual job where, you know, nothing really goes wrong. Um, don't really go to a school. I mean... A lot of people go, well, if you don't go to school, you're an idiot. Well, I think if you think not going to school makes you an idiot, then perhaps you're the idiot. Because there are hardly any jobs that you go to school for and you come out and they're not some sort of stress. There's not stress involved with them. Yes, I know, so there are casual jobs out there. I'm just saying that, like, you go to school to get one of these jobs, and odds are there's going to be things about it you don't like. And a lot of people don't like admitting the things they don't like about their job. They like to go, no, my job's great, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, it's just like, yeah, I rather doubt that very much. I guarantee you there's something that pisses you off about your job. And, uh, you know, real cool jobs, uh, you know, like my old man. And, you know, him basically being paid by, uh, you know, his distributing companies to get drunk with uh, rock stars uh, back in the 80s, you know, pretty cushy number, sounds like a lot of fun, I'd like to do that, I deserve to do that, I think I earned it, um, but anyway, turn off, off, off the topic here, uh, well not really, because I, I was trying to explain to one of my original friends that uh, the music industry, in a sense, was a godlike entity. It has the devil, obviously. Uh, heavy metal music is a lot of it's orientated towards the devil and hell and that sort of stuff. But uh, it's a religion of its own. Uh, it has cult personality. And besides, if his definition of a god existed, then why wouldn't he have a say in the music industry? He never did quite explain that. That's because he doesn't have an answer. Uh, I mean, I've known other guys who won't say a word about like movies like The Passion of the Christ. I'm like, this movie's talking about your savior, and you're not going to say anything about it. You're not going to watch it. You're not going to do anything. Um, all right. Um, I guess uh, you're uh, you're doing your own thing, and that's super. <sighs> However, um. When I was earlier, when I was talking about you know religion in its early days, uh, it was brutal and very simplistic. It was basically that you know uh, the shepherds of the time didn't really know how to control the masses or the sheep very well. They weren't good at it yet, and they're still not. But uh, they've gotten a bit better, but they're not that much better. And you know. Basically, it was like a lunatic thing. Like these people would all be in rows praying, praying, and there'd be maybe a few guys who were a little bit smarter, probably a little bit more crazy, who'd be mandatory forcing them to read those uh, religious uh, books and things like that. And in the Middle East, they're fucking writing a scribble. It's like it is big time chicken scratch. It's not even a fucking language. Uh, like you look at what they write on on things and you're like is this even a fucking alphabet or is this fucking you know a blind person uh you know 
thinking he's stabbing a pineapple, but really he's, you know, making marks on a on a piece of jit rock. What what is this? What what what, what is this? <laughs> and uh, you know, they just they go around and uh, they have these uh, religious gatherings and basically. Uh, they repeat what few stories they know over and over again and you know it's basically it when they needed to rally up people they get them angry for some reason and then off they go to war um, that's uh, you know it was a little bit, a little bit crazy man I mean if you're you know sitting and praying multiple times a day you don't really have a coherent thought in your head just some vague idea of like what you're doing you like I don't believe in meditation or anything like that in that sense it's you know it really is a waste of time you 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 know if you're actually thinking constructive thoughts and you're actually going somewhere but if you're just sitting there in sort of a vegetative state then uh then you're just an idiot it's as simple as that um well there was another fact I wanted to bring up about it oh yeah right my theory about the executor as a Pokemon. Um, basically, this Pokemon uh, looks like uh, a tree with multiple heads. It's got eggs for heads, and they're all around the top. And presumably, the tree is. You know, I almost forgot what one of those things look like. Does it have a face of its own? I think it does. I think it has a face of its own. It doesn't have arms. I think that's what it is. Uh, and it's got eggs attached to it, like the top part, which I guess would be like coconuts or something, and it can walk around. And, you know, um, they drop off, and one of its attacks is, you know, egg explosion or something like that. Now, think of it this way. The executor is like the shepherd in religion. He goes around, and he has his followers, you know, his eggs around his head, who are stupid, and do what they told, and in which case could sometimes mean being blown up, as in uh, Middle Eastern terms. That's usually how it works, because uh, I gather that most suicide bombers are, you know, fairly young. They're not 30 years old or anything like that. Younger than that, you know, between 20 and 25, I think most of them are. From when you read about the stories and stuff like that, they don't know shit at that age. They only know whatever the fuck it is they've been told. Uh, and if they're told in a certain manner, then, you know, they may not want to learn anything else. That may be all they want to know, because they've built up social walls that inhibit uh, other ideas from getting in. And, you know, you get a lot of people who are, you know, even 30 years of age, who don't realize that they have these walls in their heads. That... Uh, they're incapable of thinking in a different thought pattern and they think that's an advantage for them no no no, no. that's an impediment uh, that's you know that's not good for you at all uh, I mean obviously there are things that uh, you're not going to change your mind on but um, you know you, you can't build up a stone wall in your head and refuse to learn anything just because you don't like it uh, because that's sort of borderline mental illness uh, in my opinion, um, but um, I'm not even you know I'm not even sure if I mentioned the executor in another video or not. Uh, probably a while ago, I mentioned something during the suicide bombing. It might have even been during one of that London attack or something like that. I really ought to relook at the videos I made before I you know go ahead and make new ones. <laughs> Uh, you know, actually, I just really wanted to make a video today, and I didn't have much of a topic, so I figured, hey, you know, I could say a few things about religion, talk for a little bit, see what uh, I get out of that. So I may have mentioned one or two of those things before. Um, but, uh, you know, there are calls for people to outright ban religion, and, you know, Get, do away with the churches and things like that. And another thing, there are churches out there that are magnificent buildings, like great architectural achievements. And, you know, that in itself uh, is worth 
you know, remarking upon and uh, thinking of it as a really awesome thing. Uh, it's just, you can't be told things uh, in too simple a fashion and also with, um, you know, the intention of having walls put up in your head where you can't learn really uh, that's very possible um, and uh, we're slowly beginning to learn that um, you know there are better ways of doing things and personal biases being taken out of society and all that sort of stuff um, and it may well have all started with religion to an extent I mean I mean, the Druids uh, believed their thing, and you know, various other cultures have believed other things, and you know, those are all kind of just different states of religion. And you know, what really ought to be done is, you know, the best parts of each religion ought to be taken and implemented into, you know, modern philosophy and ideology. Um, when I say that, you know, obviously there are certain cultures. Uh, and uh, religious practices that will not be invited to the party uh, and this isn't race based this is just thought and idea based um, I mean if you know an idea is worth incorporating then fine um, you know in a sense that's stealing someone's idea but uh, it's not like that not like that at all it's just the evolution of an idea Uh, well, this has been kind of a rambly video talking about religion and how I think it's still important in society. Uh, obviously, it's gone through a lot of change. Going to go through more. Uh, honestly, I think there should be aspects of it to make it a little more interesting because I'm finding it to be very boring. And a lot of that can be incorporated into the fact that uh, there are a lot of people out there that have personal bias who don't want uh, a religious institution being able to tell stories in you know a really good manner because uh, you know it isn't their version and therefore they're unhappy because of that uh, because you know there are different versions and you know some are good and some are bad and some are bad for some people or good for others and that other sort of stuff uh, and there's a lot of arguments that's why you know you learn anything about well, we use Hollywood, for example. There are a lot of people who are anal retentive about, like, the dumbest shit, man, that, like, nobody should care about, but they are anal retentive about it. Uh, I mean, like, little things don't bother me too much, but they actually, like, make it a point to edit little things out of movies uh, and, you know, tell different versions, and it's just, like, why? Why have an argument over something that, you know, no one cares about, no one's even going to notice? It's the same thing with religion, uh, you know, because, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, obviously there have uh, been clashes of ideological beliefs, uh, and uh, throughout the past it's, uh, you know, not been good, and unfortunately, Human evolution has not gone far enough to um, more or less tone that down. Um, there's still people out there who hate each other for private reasons. And uh, there's still people out there who are cunts over, uh, you know, like stuff that shouldn't even matter to them. Um, well, I think I've uh, talked long enough on this video. Um, I'd be amazed if anyone actually sat here and watched 34 minutes of it. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't have, but maybe somebody else did. So I will talk to you guys later. Have a good one. And uh, if you're just here to troll my video, then fuck you.